Oh, come on. Why is it being so slow? God, I hate slow computers. Don't you? Hey, guys. Tech Coach Albert here. Today, we're going to discuss some tips to how you can speed up your computer. If you're anything like me, I hate having a slow computer. So today, let's take a couple minutes and figure out what we can do at home to make it better. The easiest thing we can do to speed up our computer generally is just by restarting it. Not everybody realizes you should start restart your computer at least once a week, if not even more often, especially some of those older computers. This is going to clear out some of the RAM, some of the caches. It's going to just kind of wipe everything clean and start fresh with some of the stuff that just holds data while your computer's on. Really simple, really easy, and a lot of the time it works. Especially if you have other problems as well. You'd be surprised at how much a restart actually fixes things. So make sure you do a restart at least once a week. Emptying your recycle bin. That's number two on our list. All that data that you delete doesn't actually get deleted until you empty your recycle bin. The more f space is used up in your hard drive, the harder it is and the longer it takes your computer to find the files it needs to open your programs, your pictures, your documents, whatever it may be. So make sure you empty your recycle bin weekly as well. Get rid of that space on there, free up some of the space, and keep on going. Number three, uninstall programs that you don't use. That old game you used to play four or five years ago still on your computer, that's eating up space. And it's a good chance it may even be eating up resources that's just besides just space on your computer. There's programs that automatically run in the background whether you use them or not. Those are the ones that really kill us, especially as our computers age and the programs get more and more requirement to use more resources. They just sit there and accumulate all that processor power in the background just on wasted stuff that you're not even using. So make sure you go to your uninstall programs area. Get rid of those programs you don't use anymore. That's going to help as well. Number four on our list of ways to speed up your computer is use the Windows Disk Cleanup Utility. This can be found if you go to the properties on your C drive. It's going to go through and not only clean out your recycle bin, clear some of your temporary files, but it's also going to get access to some of the files that you don't necessarily always get to, which would be updates from Windows, backups that it makes before doing the updates and after doing the updates, the backups it downloads and all that. That stuff's just sitting out there wasting space. And again, the more space that's being used up by your hard drive, the longer it takes for your computer to find the data you need. So get rid of that extra junk, clean up the hard drive, and you'll get some more speed out of your core computer. Number five, defragment your hard drive. Deleting all the junk off your hard drive is great, but there's one extra step you gotta do what we call defragging the hard drive. Basically, that's going to reorganize everything. It's going to take everything. It's like you have a cluttered closet. You can't find anything. You take everything out of the closet. You organize it, put it back. Easier to find. It's faster. It's simpler. That's what defragging your hard drive is going to do. All that data that's scattered throughout your computer, it's going to organize it, put all the file, the bits and the the little bits of data that make up your different files all together so they're quick and easy to access. This can be also found under the tools area of your hard drive. Number six, remove malware. Malware, which is known as malicious software, can use resources as it tries to infect your computer, as it's trying to branch out and affect other computers, where um, it's trying to capture whatever data it is that they're trying to get. Um, could be in the form of toolbars trying to monitor your internet activity. It could be all kinds of different things. That's just eating up your processing power, using your RAM, your memory, wasting hard drive space. So we want to make sure we go run through a good malware check weekly. And 
For those of you not familiar with it, I've got a full guide on how to do that. There should be a link at the bottom. Make sure to check it out. On top of malware, we've got viruses. So number seven, we want to make sure we remove all viruses off your computer. Viruses are constantly eating at your computer, trying to spread itself to everyone else. Sometimes they're so bad you can barely do anything on your computer because it's using so much of your resources. So a good antivirus program monitoring your system 24-7 is perfect. You also want it to scan every couple days to make sure it does a nice quality deep scan and finds any of the other files that might, you might have downloaded or temporary stuff that came through the internet, etc. Also, with this one, I've got a program I recommend you use, and I got even a full guide and walkthrough of how to download it, install it, and use it. Check out for a link below. Number eight, we've cleaned out our PC, all the junk on the hard drive, but if you're using a real desktop PC with a tower, you need to actually physically clean out the PC. That means unplug it, pull the side of the case off, get your vacuum or duster or can of air, go outside and blow the dust out of there. The more dust that's in there, the harder for it is the fans to move the air through your computer and the tower, which causes more heat, which then causes hardware failure and causes things to slow down. Heat is a big enemy of computers and dust is a big reason that things overheat. Make sure you do that every six months or so, especially if your computer is on the ground and not in inside of a case or a cabinet or something like that. If it's on the ground, that's where most of the data is going to, the uh, dust is going to accumulate. You want to make sure that thing stays as clean as possible. Number nine, update windows. You want to make sure your computer is always up to date with the latest Windows updates. Now there's a setting in your control panel to automatically take care of Windows updates for you. That's perfect for people that don't like to mess with it. That'll make it nice and simple for you. It'll automatically tell you when it's done. It'll ask you to restart every once in a while and that's perfect. Generally the Windows updates go out every Tuesday so you can look out Tuesday evenings, uh, Wednesday mornings. You'll typically get an update or two depending on what operating system you have and what malicious issues they have found in the operating system that they've needed to fix. This is going to help prevent people accessing your system, getting into your system, backdooring in and getting viruses on your machine and everything like that. A very important thing to have is make sure your computer is always up to date. Tip number 10, updating your hardware drivers. Your hardware, like your video card, your sound card, your display, all have to communicate with the hardware in your tower to the hardware that's the actual physical device. Sometimes there could be hardware conflicts that slow things down, make it unstable, could cause your system to crash, whatever it may be. Using Windows Update, you can generally get the latest drivers of everything. But if you're having an issue, you can also check the manufacturer's website. They'll always have a support section with driver downloads. Always good to check that out and make sure you've got the latest if you're having an issue with something. Tip number 11, preventing startup programs. Now, when you install a program, depending on what it is, it may automatically install a, a section that's going to launch itself every time you turn on your computer whether you're using that computer or not or whether you're using that um, software or not that's good if you use that software all the time that's bad if you have a low resource machine and you only need that software once in a while you need every bit of power you can get and when it's wasted on something running in the background that you don't even use bad idea bad bad idea so there's different tools you can use to find out what starts up on your computer. One of them is called msconfig. It's a Microsoft program that's built into Windows. That's msconfig. Um, Google it if you want some tips on how to use it. I'm also going to write up a guide on how to uh, check it out, what to do, what not to do, etc. And uh, there's a couple other tools out there that 
can read that stuff as well and one of them is C cleaner and watch for a guide on that as well that'll take care of actually a lot of the tips that we have in this guide C cleaner can actually help out with those tip number 12 we have is upgrading our ramp up to this point everything we've said can be done for free easy free simple stuff to do to speed up your computer at some point it's gonna need a little bit more than just cleanup stuff and that's where we get into upgrading RAM and depending on uh, how old your computer is will depend on what RAM is available um, how hard it is to get how hard it is to install generally desktop PCs are really easy to install the RAM laptops are a little bit on a more case-by-case -case basis some of them are really simple a couple screws some of them are very complex where you have to remove big chunks of your of your laptop those ones we don't really want to mess with but if you notice your uh, CP or your RAM being used more than 75 percent most of the time it's pr and you've tried the other steps that we've covered here it's probably time to look at upgrading your RAM now best thing to do is use a tool from crucial they um, they have a tool that'll tell you what RAM you need then you can check out Amazon or Newegg or one of the other vendors online to find the best deal for the RAM you can get and if you're not sure how to install the RAM yourself you can probably find somebody in your in your circle of friends that can do it for you it's not that difficult tip number 13 is upgrading your hard drive up until a couple of years ago most all the hard drives were a spinning disk inside your computer you could hear it you could hear it kick on it sound like a car motor I mean not that loud but you know you can hear it speeding up and slowing down as you did different things on your computer they've gone now to what's called a solid state drive and most commonly referred to as SSD drives it's like the little compact flash cards or secure digital cards that you use for your cameras there's no moving parts in it but it's a hard drive it can hold a lot of a lot of, a lot of information and it's very very fast way faster than any of the spinning disk drives that you're used to that can make a huge night and day difference between an old computer with a SSD drive and one without so they're pretty cheap too you can get a 120 gig SSD drive for around 60 bucks um, that'll be pretty sufficient for most people um, you can get the next size up which is 240 I believe around the 110 120 range um, I've got some links on my website if you go to this blog post I've got actually a couple up there where you can see um, a couple recommendations that I have for you and generally upgrading the hard drive is not very difficult the act of changing or upgrading to it it the more difficult part is reinstalling Windows or moving Windows to that hard drive from your old machine your old hard drive that you might want to get some help with but do a little research it's not overly difficult or complicated just got to make sure you have the right pieces and tools for you Tip number 14 is a fresh Windows install. This means you completely erase your hard drive, you install Windows fresh from the computer or the download or whatever, however you get it, and then you install just the program you need, just those programs that you need. Over the years of using our computers, old programs get there, get left behind, their garbage files, the internet files, all that stuff just accumulates over and over and over. It gets to be a slow, slow computer. And sometimes even all the fixes that we can, all the tips we can do, just doesn't quite get rid of all of it. So kind of a last resort would be to, re to do a fresh Windows installation. And you know what? Some people even do that once a year just because it's easier than doing some of the other suggestions we have. Um, if you're technology inclined to do all that stuff, it can be pretty quick to do it. But make sure you have a good backup. 15, tip number 15, if your computer's old and everything else doesn't work, you can't get RAM, don't have a solid state drive you can get to put in it, you just don't want to spend the money on it, you can take a look at a Linux based operating system. Um, it's similar to Windows as far as how, it, how it's used, but they're designed to use minimal resources. They're designed to keep it clean, keep it simple, and just kind of work. If you, all you're doing is surfing the internet, doing some email, maybe taking a picture or two, most likely you'll be just fine in a Linux based operating system. One of the uh, the ones I see recommended a lot 
um, is an easy transition over from Windows to Linux um, is the Linux Mint operating system. There's a whole bunch of different different variations of Linux out there, but that one seems to be a pretty easy transition to learn the differences of the two operating systems. It's fairly similar. And again, this is going to completely wipe your computer, so you want to make sure everything you really need, your documents, your pictures, are all stored somewhere off your computer on external hard drive, up on a cloud backup, or something along those lines is very, very important. And last, our 16th tip, when all else fails, sometimes you just got to get a new computer. They only last for so long. The thing you want to do, though, is you don't want to buy the newest computer on the market because that's going to be the most expensive and your least bang for buck that you can buy. What you want to look at is something that was really, really good last year that's going to be a really, really good price this year. Technology hasn't changed that much year to year to make that much of a difference to, to quantify paying double or triple the price. So check it out. There's a lot of good deals out there for some really good hardware. In fact, I've got a couple of them on my website. If you go to this particular blog post, I have a, a, one of the servers that I just bought in my own, and I think I paid like 250 bucks for it. Really good machine. Runs solid. Real solid manufacturer worth checking out. So sometimes you just got to buy something new. Eventually things get old and too too old to mess with. So those are the 16 tips we have to speed up your computer. Now there is um, a full blog post on this with a little bit more detail with some examples of what solid state drives you can buy, um, what, what some desktop um, computers I recommend um, some little more details on some of this stuff and uh, so I re recommend you check out the full blog post link is up there in the the upper left corner of your screen um, we have our website www.techcoachalbert.com you'll find a bunch of other tips over there as well and I'd like to thank you for watching our video and don't forget to subscribe using the subscribe link below and leave a comment I love hearing from you guys Thanks, guys. Bye.